there's this myth that if you fall off a high structure like a bridge or a crane or something over water and you throw a hammer in front of you, that it'll save your life because it'll break the surface tension of the water. I guess this is based on the idea that if you fall from really large height, hitting water is pretty much like hitting concrete. I mean, it, it doesn't move out of the way like we expect it to. It actually resists impact at that speed. Yeah, and so by throwing a weight in front of you, you're going to break the surface tension or possibly simply aerate the water to where it slows your deceleration down. You, you don't stop so quickly because that stop is what kills you. Right. Busting the hammer jump myth involves G-forces, terminal velocity, surface tension, and a helpful crash test dummy named Buster. The critical science requires calculating the force at impact. Adam will fit Buster with an accelerometer, the same type used by courier companies, to see if your packages are being treated gently. It measures the energy generated by sudden stops. We've got to put this in his head or in his torso, wherever it will fit. This is an accelerometer. This will measure the G-force when he hits the water. Oh, look at that. That's really pretty. Buster's cavities are designed to hold smaller instruments for auto industry research. He's a crash test dummy after all. Adam's task is to make room inside the dummy to accommodate a larger accelerometer. I like this. I'm quite pleased with this. Back at the Mare Island docks, all is ready for Buster's big day out. Will his dramatic drop prove that a hammer could break a fall and save a life? I just tested all the systems of the accelerometer, and they're all a go. We are all good to go. Release at your leisure. Three, two, one, go. Buster has been falling an average of 60 miles an hour. Because of the missing legs, to get consistent data, they decide to start again. Another test, we'll do a control without legs and without a hammer, and then we'll do another one with the hammer. All cameras are rolling, it's a go. so radically, radically hardcore. So hardcore, the accelerometer registered a force of 287 Gs, a devastating impact, considering an average car crash rates around 70 Gs. Time to attach the hammer. Will it break the surface tension and help prove the myth? We're ready on your count. Even with the hammer falling first, the dummy still registered a shattering impact of 239 Gs. Three, two, one, go! 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 I think that losing the leg affected our results. We got a good control of three drops without the hammer and three drops with the hammer. That's a reasonable data set to make an uh, assessment as to whether or not the hammer helped or didn't do anything. My gut feeling about this is that the hammer is probably having somewhat of an effect on the impact that the dummy receives. I don't think it's all that much. I don't think it would save your life, personally. That's our first one with a hammer. Did a face plant at a slight angle, but first. Back at the workshop, Adam and Jamie are comparing the different impact curves downloaded from the accelerometer. Yeah, there's effectively no difference in the length of that curve, just between 200 and 300 Gs. Hmm. Even if the hammer helped a little bit, when he hits the water, he's going 60 miles per hour plus, which is like twice the speed that they test auto crashes. You know, the thought that jumping off something and hitting water is going to, like, literally rip your limbs off your body is surprising. I never would have thought that. It blew my mind, actually. Yeah. And then, bottom line, our data doesn't show any effect of the hammer at all. No, it doesn't. I would say that this myth 
is busted. I agree. Oh, look at that. That's really pretty.